I'm going to demonstrate some essentials for using Git and GitHub. And uh, for this video, I'm assuming that you have gone to git-scm.com and installed a version of Git, and that you also have a GitHub account. Both things are free, and uh, I'm going to be demonstrating this in the Mac, but you can certainly follow along in Windows. All the commands are the same. When you start Git in Windows, you should use the Git Bash. All right, for uh, Mac users, I'm going to go to uh, Spotlight Search and launch Terminal. And uh, Git runs natively in the Mac OS, but in Windows, uh, you do need to run it through Bash. It does not run at uh, the DOS command prompt. So all Git commands um, start with just Git. All right, so anything after this is, is an actual command. And the first thing you should probably do is to tell Git who you are. So if you're just installed, you want to set up the configuration file. And we're going to set a global user name. All right, so here you would just put your name in quotation marks. And then press Enter. OK, next we're going to give it an email address. Same thing, git config global. All right, and the reason why you do this is, is because, you know, one of the strengths of Git is as a collaboration tool. And uh, when you're collaborating, you're generally uh, putting stuff online. And when you make commits or uh, you know send file changes up to Git Hub, uh, then uh, this will just sort of tag any changes with your identity, and it'll help uh, productivity that way. Okay, so now we have a uh, a user and uh, an email address, so we can be identified. Uh, the next thing uh, we're going to do probably is is set up a repository and a repository is nothing more than a, a directory or folder on your computer alright and uh, when you learn git we're operating from the command line inevitably you have to learn just a little bit of unix okay so I will I will tell you where the unix is so the first thing in unix is uh, you probably want to know where you are so pwd print working directory all right, and it shows you, um, you know, when you launch Terminal, you're going to be in your home directory. Okay. Uh, the next thing you probably do is create a new directory in which the all the files you're going to be working with are, are going in. So here's another Unix command. It's make directory. And then just the directory name. Okay. And then in order to turn this into a Git repository, we're going to need to move into that directory. So I'm going to change directory, another Unix command, and then just the directory name. Okay. And if you want to see what files are in there, we will ls list them. All right, there's nothing in there right now. Okay. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to make up a, uh, a file and uh, the way we can create files in Unix is I can use touch and then just a file name. All right, I'm just going to end it with the text. So now I've just created an empty file. If I ls that, we can see that, okay, now the directory has a file in there. Okay. We can also quickly create files uh, with a little bit of content using echo. And, you know, we might say something like, you might spell it right. Oh, 
like that. Okay, so we now have a couple of very basic files in here. Um, this will work for any kind of file, whether it's a word processor file, spreadsheet file, uh, software code, anything at all. Files, folders, directories. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and, and turn this into a git repository. Uh, I do that with git init. Alright, so now Git is ready to go ahead and track all the changes made in this root directory. Okay, and the first thing we probably want to do is see what uh, what Git sees. So we're going to use Git status, and this is a general purpose command that shows you uh, all the files and folders in your repository and sort of gives you the, the status of whether or not they're being tracked or whether they've had changes. You can see that we have two files untracked. So I'm going to go ahead and add them in to Git so they are being tracked with Git add. Okay, and there's a number of ways to add files. Okay, but I am just going to add them all with the minus A switch. Okay, we're going to do another Git status to see what that changed. All right, so now you can see that, okay, Git is tracking them. All right, in my, uh, in my window, they, they've changed from red to green. Okay, and uh, now we're ready to uh, commit them. All right, so sort of a process. You add a file to your repository, work on it as you normally would. Okay, and then go and ask Git to add it to your repository. And then when you commit the changes, um, that's sort of a stop point that you can uh, revert back to uh, using git. Okay, so we're going to git commit. All right, and um, we're going to use these two switches, A and M. All right, every time you make a commit, git wants you to give it some kind of a note. All right, so some kind of message on here, some kind of commit message. I'm just going to say it's the initial commit. Typical. All right, so you can see what happened. It now has this sort of reset point that we can come back to uh, if there's any changes and, and the changes sort of aren't what you want. Okay. All right, so we're just about ready to uh, move this out to GitHub. Um, and to do that, uh, GitHub wants sort of a uh, an entry page for every one of your repositories. Uh, and they they use the readme.md or markdown file as your entry page. So before we put this up on GitHub, we have to make a readme.md file. Okay, so I'm going to use echo to do that. And I'm just going to say... like that. All right, so once again we'll get status. All right, you can see that okay we need to add this readme file so I will get add and this time I'll use the file name and then I will get commit. All right, and now there's only one file, so I'm just going to use a message. All right, so we know what was going on in that commit. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, go ahead and move this out to GitHub. So I'm going to switch over to GitHub. All right, and I'm going to make a new repository. I'm going to mirror the name that I have on uh, my local computer. So we'll call it my repo. All OK, and the, the, for, with your free account, um, you only get to use public repository. So anything you commit out here, theoretically, people could find. Um, 
you know, depending on what it is, you may just want to be aware of that. If you need to keep things private, then um, you would need to sign up for the private account. Okay, so once I create a repository and hit uh, create, it will give me a link to where that thing lives. All right, and it gives you a little bit of helpful hints about how to how to set up a repository. So if you had started here, you would have seen that, oh, okay, make a readme file, uh, get a knit, and then um, basically some of the same steps that, that we made. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to um, the terminal, and I'm going to uh, set up a, a remote session, all right, which we call the origin. You can call it anything you want, but that's kind of the, the convention, call it an origin. All right, and uh, we're going to essentially give an alias for this, so we don't have to type this in every time we want to push files out to GitHub. Okay. All right, so we're going to git remote add origin. Oops. Okay, and so now we have this alias called origin. All right, and now we're ready to push this thing up to GitHub. So we're going to use push the U switch. Okay, and so we're referring to um, the master branch that we have on our local machine, and we want to push it up to the origin. It helps if you start with git, of course. Okay, so we have uh, now pushed that out here, and we should be able to, by navigating to uh, our repositories, We should be able to see those files. So there they are. All right, and you can see what happens uh, with the README file. It automatically gets loaded here. Okay. All right, so you can use it to put any kind of information you'd want people to know about your repository, not just not just the test that we made. Okay, so this has been just a quick overview of uh, what I might consider Git Essentials, how to set up a repository, how to add files, how to make commits, and uh, how to push it out to GitHub. Those are probably the most common things uh, that people are, are going to want to do. If you want to pull things down from Git, uh, you can generally find the repository. And it will have a, a URL. And on your local machine, you can get clone, all right, or you can download the files right there, probably either in a in their uh, uncompressed format or or as a zip file. Okay, so hope this helps.